ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد الحمد لله last week we had mentioned about the first part of the shahada and we know we have a shahadatain the two shahadas first we're testifying ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah and we had briefly mentioned that the first thing once we end up dead and we are in our graves doesn't matter who you are where you're from what your level what your wealth every single person will be asked the same three questions man rabbuk wa man nabiyyuk wa madinuk so alhamdulillah briefly covered the first aspect of man rabbuk who's your lord the aspect of tawhid so inshallah ta'ala today we're going to look at the second part of the shahada wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah because that's the second question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us in our graves. Man nabiyuk? Who is your prophet? Right now we are alive, we're breathing. If somebody were to ask us as a Muslim, who's your prophet? Of course all of the prophets of Allah are our prophets. But of course when you are asked who's your prophet and messenger, of course we reply Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost. However, once we are dead, it is not going to be a piece of cake like it is now. If we do not know who our prophet is, if we do not value him the right way, if we do not follow him, if we do not take him as our final judge in all matters, answering this question in our graves will not be easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> sent the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a purpose. كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ As he says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Just as a messenger has been sent to you from amongst yourselves. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا He recites to you our verses. When Jibreel alayhi salam came down with the Qur'an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam heard it and he recited word for word to the people. That was his job to recite the Qur'an to Bani Adam. Not just Bani Adam, to all of creation. Because the Prophet ﷺ had this unique characteristic. Every single Nabi or Rasul that came before him was sent to specific nations and for a specific time period. But because Muhammad ﷺ is the final Prophet and Messenger from Allah, his message is for the whole of creation. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as a mercy to everything that exists. So this was uniquely for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam being the final prophet and messenger. So his job was to recite the Qur'an to all of Allah's creation, to the men, mankind and jinn. وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ And he purifies you. By obeying the messenger, by following his footsteps, you will purify yourself. He recites the Qur'an to you, he purifies you. وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And he teaches you Al-Kitab, the Qur'an wal-Hikmah. 
Not only does he recite the Quran to you, but he teaches you the book, wal hikmah, the explanations of al kitab, how to understand, how to approach the ayat of Allah, how to implement it in your lives. He's the one who teaches you the meaning of the Quran and how to apply it. Wa yu'allimukum al kitab wal hikmah. Wa yu'allimukum ma lam takunu ta'lamun. And the fourth thing, he teaches you that which you did not know before. People were in jahiliyyah. Before the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa society was in chaos. The Arabs, they had economic problems, social problems, family problems, all sorts of issues. They were far, far behind the Romans, the Greek, the Babylonians, the ancient Egyptians. Far behind in every way. So the Prophet ﷺ came and taught us what we did not know before. And through Islam, the Muslims succeeded. So this is the Messenger ﷺ, his purpose. So when we say, وَأَشَّدُوا أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And we testify that there is no, that Muhammad ﷺ is the Messenger of Allah. We testify to that. What does it mean? Is this just a lip service? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the hadith that's narrated by Al-Miqdam bin Ma'di Karib in a hadith in Abu Dawood, the Tirmidhi and others. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ala inni utitu al-kitaba wa mithlahu ma'ahu. Indeed, I have been given al-kitab, the book, wa mithlahu ma'ahu, and something similar to it, with it. So Allah gave him the Qur'an and something similar to the Qur'an with it. What is that? Similar thing with the Qur'an. As Allah says, وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ That's what Allah gave him. The Qur'an came, but also the explanation of the Qur'an was given to the Prophet ﷺ, his sunnah. Whenever he spoke about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he spoke about the deen of Allah, it wasn't something that he just made up from his own. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He doesn't speak from his own desires. Rather, it is an inspiration that has been inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. So just as the Qur'an was revealed, how to understand the Qur'an, how to apply the Qur'an, was given to him as well. These are from his own words. In that same hadith, the Prophet ﷺ continued, Ala yushiku rajulun shab'anun ala arikatihi. There will come a time in the future where someone will be laying on his couch with a full stomach. This is a metaphor. What, what, what happens when we're like full stomach, we ate, we relax? Doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. It's a relaxed situation. You're not worried, you're not taking things seriously, you're not caring, you're relaxing at that moment. That's how we sit down. So people will be relaxing. They'll have this relaxed attitude. And then at that situation, they're gonna say, they're going to tell each other in that play, in that situation, carefree attitude. You have the Qur'an. Whatever is halal in the Qur'an, take it as halal. Whatever is haram in the Qur'an, take it as haram. And do we not find many Muslims who are like this today? They have a very negligent attitude towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa towards his sunnah. So many people will tell you, Ah, what's up with all this sunnah and all this? You, have, you got the Qur'an, that's it, we don't need anything else. Just as the Prophet ﷺ says. A time will come when people will ignore my sunnah. Whatever is in the Qur'an, that's it. We don't care about anything else. So the Prophet ﷺ then continues, وَإِنَّ حَرَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَمَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ Indeed, something that is forbidden by the Messenger, it is the same as Allah forbidding it. That's, this is our religion. Why do you think when someone becomes a Muslim, you have to take these two shahadas? We understand the kalima is la ilaha illallah. 
But when you are becoming a Muslim, you have to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Don't just stop there. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. There is a purpose behind the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His sunnah is not something that we should ignore. We are obligated to follow his sunnah. Over 80 ayat in the Quran, my dear brothers and sisters, over 80 ayat, 8-0, where Allah obligates us to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So do you think this is just a lip service? I love the Prophet. I love his sunnah. But we don't follow it. We think, ah, it's okay. An example, we are sitting here for Salatul Jumu'ah. There's even a surah called Al Jumu'ah. Allah tells us, come to the dhikr of Allah. When the adhan for Salatul Jumu'ah is called, leave off businesses, leave off earning. You come and attend Salatul Jumu'ah. That's it. How do we know that we have to give a khutbah and followed by rak'atayn? That's not mentioned in the Quran. You have to go to hadith. The Prophet ﷺ explained this. Jumu'ah is fard upon every man. How to offer the Jumu'ah? We're not praying four rak'at like dhuhr, like the, throughout the rest of the week. We are praying two rak'at, rak'atain. But there's a khutbah that is part of the salah. Right? So inshallah ta'ala, brothers, inshallah, you get in the habit of coming before the khutbah starts. Because the khutbah is part of the salah. If you miss the khutbah from the beginning, if you're really late, it's as if you did not attend the salah. Or you'll get very minimum reward. So you come and listen. This is the most important lecture of the week. This is how you learn your religion. There's hikmah why Allah made the khutbah fard as well. So you learn your religion with the hope that at least from this once a week khutbah, you become serious enough to listen to more lectures throughout the week. Because, face it, if you tell somebody there's a classes three days a week, one hour each, he's not going to come or she will not come. You train your heart by that 20 minute, 30 minute khutbah. That should impact your life enough to change you for the rest of the week. So khutbah is part of the salah. We get this from the sunnah of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's mandatory. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed many rules in this manner. The general sense is there, aqimu salah Establish the prayer. Who taught us in the Qur'an, Fajr is rak'atayn, Dhuhr is four, Asr is four, Maghrib is three, and Isha is four. There's not a single ayah in the Qur'an that says that. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that in his sunnah. There is no way you can ignore his sunnah and have your religion intact. It will not happen. You will lose your religion if you leave the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Here is a good time to mention another ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of those 80 verses he says, "Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe." That's us. Those who have said the shahadatain and have become Muslim and have become believers. O oh, you who believe, ati'u allaha wa ati'u rasula wa ulil amri minkum. Allah mentions three things here, but there is a difference in the way he mentions. So, O oh, you who believe, ati'u allaha, obey Allah. That's first and foremost. Wa ati'u rasula, and obey the messenger. وَأُلِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And those who have authority over you. Think. Allah repeated three things or mentioned three things. He repeated one word twice but did not mention it for the third time. أَطِعُ اللَّهَ You obey Allah. Unconditional obedience. If Allah says something, you have no choice. You must obey Allah. He's your Lord. And we talked about it last Friday. The whole understanding of Tawheed, you submit to Allah, that's a Muslim. You don't ask Allah why. Your Lord who created you has told you this, you submit to Him. وَأَطِعُ rasula, And you obey the Messenger. Don't ask the Prophet ﷺ questions. If you truly have Iman, you'll understand and you'll submit to his words as well. 
وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا as Allah says in another verse whatever he gives to you whatever he tells you take it do it and whatever he forbids you stay away from it وَاتَّقُوا الله and have the taqwa of Allah إِنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ indeed Allah is severe in punishment so going back أَطِيُوا الله obey Allah وَأَطِيُوا الرَّسُولَ and obey the messenger وَأُلِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ and those who have authority over you the word missing is أَطِيُوا it's not present for أُلِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ why? because to Allah and His Messenger it is unconditional obedience doesn't matter what Allah and His Messenger have said, I must obey because I am a Muslim. However, ulil amri minkum, those who have authority over you, as long as they command you what Allah and His Messenger said, you obey that. If they say something that contradicts the Prophet and Allah, you ignore that. Wa ulil amri minkum, the Sahaba from Abdullah ibn Abbas and others radiallahu anhum, وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Those who have authority over you, these are the umara, the leaders of the Muslims, وَالْعُلَمَاء And the teachers of the religion, they have authority over you. But as long as they are commanding, if suppose a Muslim leader says, all of you must drink alcohol, he's a leader, but we don't obey you in that aspect because you're telling us to do something that is haram. There is no unconditional obedience to any human being. So that is the general meaning. Those who are the leaders and the ulama. Then you come in your daily life. You children, your parents are ulil amri minkum. Your parents have authority over you. Your father and mother tells you something that is in line with Allah and His Rasul, you obey them. If they tell you, Allah forbid something that goes against Islam, you don't obey that specific command, but everything else you keep intact. The mother who gave you birth, who carried you for nine, ten months, who broke her back delivering you, who gave you milk from her own breasts, she is not above Allah and His Messenger. You have to remember this. Your father who pays for your food, clothing, schooling, he is not above Allah and His Messenger. أَطِيُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيُوا الرَّسُولَ Obey Allah, obey the Messenger, but the rest who have authority, as long as they are in line with Islam. Just that one command you ignore, but everything else that they say, you respect them and you behave with them honorably. Similarly, so we have the leaders who have authority over us. We have the ulama, the imams and the shuyukh who have authority over us. The parents have authority over us. The husband has authority over the wife. So if the husband says something to his wife that is in line with Islam, she obeys him. If he says something that goes against Islam, she ignores that command. Because her duty to Allah and his messenger is first and foremost. This is how you live in life. And then Allah says, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ he gives this command, obey Allah and obey His Messenger and those who have authority over you. And if you disagree in anything, anything whatsoever, فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ Then bring it back to Allah and His Messenger. He didn't say bring it back to those who have authority over you. Because to Allah and His Messenger is unconditional obedience. You and I have a disagreement, no problem. Let's go back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Let's see who's right. You and your father and mother have a disagreement, turn it back to Allah and His Messenger. You and your husband have a disagreement, turn it back to Allah and His Messenger. This is how a Muslim is supposed to solve their problems. Because our submission to Allah and His Messenger is what makes us Muslim. This is what we testify to. That's simple. ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا This behavior of turning back to Allah and His Messenger, this is better for you, and it will result in the best, the most excellent outcome. So those who don't understand the sunnah, their lives will be filled with problems. You go back to submitting to Allah and His Messenger. Whatever dispute, whatever confusion, whatever disagreement you have, you take it back to Allah and His Messenger. This is the meaning of our shahadatain. You are testifying that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, and you're testifying that Muhammad is Allah's messenger. 
Therefore, come back to Allah and come back to His Messenger. أقولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Allah subhanahu wa taala in a verse in Surah An-Nisa gives a very stern warning. وَمَا يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْهُدَى لَهُ الْهُدَى The one and the one who contradicts or opposes the messenger مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى After the huda, the knowledge has clearly come to him. So this is the condition. You may not know something. We may not know something. Every single day is a learning process. We are continuously learning. Just because I'm an imam doesn't mean I know everything. Every single day we are still learning. We're reading the books, we're listening, we're asking our teachers questions. Every single day is like that. All of you, every single day is a learning journey. You will have to learn till the day you die. As Allah says, وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ And over every possessor of knowledge is someone more knowledgeable. You have to remember this. It doesn't matter. You see an imam, guess what? There's somebody scholar more knowledgeable than him. You see another scholar, guess what? There's another scholar more knowledgeable than him. And above all is Al-Alim, the all-knowing who is Allah. So up over every possessor of knowledge is someone who is more knowledgeable. So our lives as Muslims, every single day we have to learn something about our religion. Until the day we die, we may not learn everything. This religion is vast, there's so much to learn. And especially our basics, we have to keep reviewing them. So Allah says here, once the clear knowledge comes to somebody, then he contradicts and he opposes the messenger. And he follows a path other than the path of the believers. When this ayah was coming down, who were the believers? The Sahaba. What did the Sahaba do? They submitted to Allah, they submitted to the Prophet. They were the best of the Muslims. Anything Allah said, anything the Prophet said, Without questions asked, they submitted. Those were the mu'minun. So the one who receives the knowledge, and he still contradicts the messenger, he opposes the messenger, and he follows a different path other than the path of the believers. We will keep him in the path he has chosen. And we will burn him in hell. What an evil destination. This is a stern warning, brothers and sisters. Once the knowledge of Allah's Messenger comes to you, once the knowledge of the Sunnah comes to you, you can't contradict and oppose it. You may not know something today, no problem. But tomorrow something will come from the Hadith, from the authentic Hadith, from his Sunnah. Don't say, for 50 years I've been doing this, for 20 years I've been doing this. But you're Bani Adam, we're human beings, I don't know everything, you don't know everything. You have to be humble. You have to be humble. Subhanallah, I didn't know this before. It's an authentic hadith. It's a meaning of an ayah that I thought it was something, but Muhammad sallallahu said something else. You do your best to change. Don't contradict, don't oppose, because Allah gives the stern warning. Once the clear knowledge comes to you, you oppose the messenger, the destination is Jahannam. Because you are contradicting the shahada. What is the point of saying wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah if you don't want to take his knowledge what's the point it's meaningless so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a stern warning in this ayah we learn we as every day goes by we learn keep your mind open and this was the way of the ulama you will never ever find go read the biographies of the imams of ahlus sunnah the Imams of Ahlul Sunnah, whoever they may be, 
إمام أبو حنيفة إمام مالك إمام شافي إمام أحمد رحمهم الله ابن كثير ابن تيمية ابن القيم thousands of imams we had from أهل السنة not a single one of them ever when they heard a hadith or something from the they never rejected it never you will never find a sheikh who did that but you find the jahil and the average muslim acting full of kibir i already know i've been doing this that's the difference between the alim and the jahil right so we have to be humble ourselves when the knowledge comes to us when the sunnah comes to us we have to humble ourselves and submit and before ending, we give a stern warning, but also the good news. The hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, and this is a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kullu ummati yadkhuloon al-jannah. All of my ummah will enter paradise. All of my ummah. Illa man aba. Except for the one who refuses. Everyone from my ummah will enter jannah, except for the one who refuses. This is amazing. What type of crazy person won't go to Jannah and refuse to go to Jannah? Qalu, so the Sahaba, of course, they were astonished. وَمَنْ يَعْبَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Who is going to refuse to go to Jannah? What are you saying? So even they were puzzled and shocked. And they asked, who will refuse to go to Jannah? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَنْ أَطَاعَنِي دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدَ أَبَى Whoever obeys me will enter paradise, and whoever disobeys me has refused to enter paradise. So going to Jannah is easy. You submit to Allah, be free from shirk, and you submit to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa That's our religion. Every law of Islam comes from qala Allah wa qala Rasul. That's it. Whatever Allah has established, whatever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has established. That's the laws of Islam. So if you obey the messenger, insha'Allah, you will go to Jannah. If you refuse to follow his path, you have refused to enter paradise. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from such ignorance and arrogance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in ilm, to bless us, uh, to be from the people of Sunnah and the people of Tawheed.